second speaker is Matthias Emsland from Iceland. He's managing director of the Icelandic Bridge Federation, and he's highly regarded for achieving a significant increase in the numbers of bridge players in Iceland since the pandemic. So we're very keen to hear about Iceland's formula for success. Thanks, Matthias. Thank you. <clears throat> well, first of all, thank you for inviting me. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over like uh, the period since I started uh, for the last 18, 20, 24 months. It will be a little bit different than from uh, the rest of the speakers, I believe, but this will be more of a case study about uh, how we have, be, have been trying to change things and where we did come from. Uh, a little bit about, my, about, about myself. Uh, I have been a uh, marketing director in quite a lot of uh, companies. Uh, I, am, I have been in the board of quite a lot of companies as well, some of the biggest companies in Iceland, uh, listed companies. Uh, then when I was in uh, Laugavatt, which is a uh, secondary grammar school, uh, I learned how to play bridge. Uh, and I always felt that bridge is something that I needed to do more about because after after secondary grammar school, I only play bridge more for fun than anything else. Uh, the situation in, in, in Iceland for the bridge had actually been uh, very difficult for quite a long time. Uh, and actually... The challenges were really, really, really big challenges. The first was we had a really bad image, and not only uh, not only uh, in, in in general and in society, we also had bad image among, among players themselves. Uh, the players were talking about uh, the last Brits Brits player is born. Uh, we are always getting older and older. Brits is dying. And then they came home with, the, with, with this uh, speech to, to, to the family. And, and actually, the image was really bad. Everybody believed Brits was dying. And not only that, the, the image in society were like, when you th thought about Brits, you thought about old men. Old men around 70. That was kind of the image. Uh, and actually, when I took over, we had not a single player under 35. Not one that was competing. And actually, in the schools that we had, uh, we, we, uh, the British Federation is, is organizing two types of school that I will go over later on in the presentation. But we have always had a school for like, uh, that we just invite every, everyone. And there were no students under 35 there. Uh, and what we saw over the last 15, 20 years, there were very few new players in general. Every year, there was uh, fewer players showing up. Uh, in the big tournaments, you could always cal calculate, if you look at the numbers, uh, there were be between years there will be fewer players. And over the 15 over the last 15, 20 years, this has been the same story every year. Uh, one of the key notes that I saw when I took over was this negativity. And it was a, like a it was a circle of negativity. Uh, and that was uh, that was one of the, the main important things that I wanted to change because the bridge players themselves are kind of are they are marketing too. If you have maybe a thousand players playing bridge, if you have them going home and saying, "Well, this is a terrible sport," and and uh, there are only old men and no no young people and no, that's really a bad marketing. But if they go home and say, wow, there's a lot of new people, it's so fun and everybody wants to play bridge, then 
then that's a cell. Then you have maybe around 1,000 people that are your sales reps in the society. Uh, when I took over, uh, there were four main issues and pillars I wanted to do over my first one, two years. Uh, the first was an uh, image change. Uh, the second one was to get the old players back, people that had been, had been playing Brits over the years, uh, know how to play Brits, but they have not shown up. They are not playing Brits. Uh, the third pillar was to get more people in general to, to learn how to play Brits, and then to start teaching young people to play Brits. This was the, you know, the main challenges I saw and uh, the main task. The image. Uh, I, Brits is a good product. It's a, it's a product that, that I believe in. And, and when you have a bad image for something that you believe is a good product, it's quite similar to what people do in, uh, in, 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 in companies. You have to rebrand. You have to believe in your product and you have to rebrand the product. And that, it's, that, is, a, uh, like a, that is something that we started to do. And the first point was all the players that are playing, we had them start believing. We showed them uh, what we are doing. We showed them the positive news. And I make sure all the time when we have a good positive news, they know about it. Because I believe, for example, in the British society in Iceland, they are, everybody's now is so positive. And they are talking about it in their work. They are talking about it in, when they come to the swimming pool. And that really, really affects everything. Uh, we are, what we did also is we have uh, a lot of more, more visibility. Uh, we, we, in, in the past, we have been quite uh, conservative uh, what, in what we did. Uh, we had ads in the main newspapers, in the radio, but what we did is we changed our strategy and we went to the social media. So we are highly effective on the social media uh, and we can see that that's really, really uh, getting our, getting result. Uh, also, we sponsored a TV show about Brits. Uh, and actually it was quite popular. It was uh, uh, one of the most popular show in, in, in the station that uh, showed that, that Brit show. And we are doing another TV show about Brits. And we are hoping uh, that that show will be on the biggest television, television station. And that will be really, really important because all this helps each other. Uh, it's not something, the, the one thing that we are doing that is making the difference. It's everything is helping each other. So it's like we are more visible. We have more news coming from us. We are uh, we have this TV show about Brits, and everything works together to make people more positive towards Brits. And what we did as well is we tried to get the young people involved, and I've been really really focusing on pushing young people and women. So it's like. All, all the news coming from Iceland about, about Brits, you see young people instead of old people. And this is part of, 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 of the image rebranding we are trying to go, go through. Uh, Brits is for, for everyone. Uh, we are actually getting a lot of coverage in Iceland. Uh, the newspapers have noticed how many people are coming to play Brits. They have noticed there's something changing and we are getting uh, newspaper articles about the new clubs that, that are coming in and, and, and 
we are getting journalists calling and asking what's happening, what, what did you do? And we always said, we believe that the result, the result and purpose go hand in hand. So if we believe and we have the purpose, we will get the result. And what has happened, and the most important thing that has happened is the positivity. It's like we have people speak very positive towards Brits. We are the players and we have the society. It's in the, in the cafeterias, everywhere. Everybody is talking about Brits at the moment and everybody is talking about it from a, a positive point of view. And that helps a lot and that has helped in, in other things I will address later on. We are getting the old good players back. Uh, players that had played 20 years ago or 15 years ago or even learned how to play bridge when they were 20 and didn't show up after that. And why are they coming back? Because it's fun. And they believe they are missing out. And the reason for that they believe that they are missing out is that uh, they know it's fun and also the image is that it's fun and it's something positive. And everybody wants to be a part of a winning team. So it's like they are thinking, well, that's something, something that I am missing out on and then show up. And it's cool to play Brits. And what has happened? Uh, we have seen in the, the biggest tournaments that we have, uh, highest number of players over the last 20 years. In most of the clubs, we are seeing the highest number of players for the last 20 years. We have seen clubs that have ceased operation starting again, and people are starting to play again in, in clubs that had ceased. And also, we have seen new clubs, especially in the countryside, that are starting to play Brits. Uh, what we have also done is that we are because of uh, how uh, how the society is looking at Brits at the moment. Uh, we have had our we have had enormous increase of students in our schools. I mean, I am talking about this school. I am talking about not the young people, just general people learning to 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 play Brits. And we, it has gone from, uh, for example, this uh, over the last last 15, 20 years, we have had like maybe 60 people go through this school. This year, it will be close to, close to 1,000. Uh, we have taken our classes to the countryside. Uh, we, we believe that uh, Brits is a, per, is a perfect sport for both big cities and small towns. So we have gone through the, through, uh, to, the, to the small towns and tried to help them build up. Because 25, 30 years ago, there was quite a lot of clubs in small towns that have since ceased operation. And that's something that we want to change and bring life again to the clubs. Uh, what we're also doing is we are adding more advanced classes. Uh, we are uh, we are offering products for people that know a little bit about Brits, uh, that, they, that they can add some knowledge in the system, they can add some knowledge in the defense, and so on and so on. And that's really something that has been helpful and has increased uh, the interest in uh, for, for, for the players. And also, which is... Uh, really important is that we have been adding tournaments for beginners because uh, we have seen that there's quite a big step after you have learned Brits and you have started to play a little bit Brits it's a big step to go into a club uh, very often I know uh, and, and, and it's very normal and it's, it should be like that 
it takes maybe 10, 15, 20 times to get better and you'll be among the last. But it's a big step. So what we have done is that we have made uh, weekly tournaments uh, for beginners where we play a tournament, but we have teachers uh, who are walking around and helping. And when people feel more comfortable, we introduce them to uh, other clubs. Uh, our absolutely biggest task is to get young people to play bridge. This is uh, the alpha omega of everything that we are doing and is the most important thing of what, everything. And not only because we want to get young people involved, but also it's like we have over the last 15, 20 years, almost no young people coming into Bridge in Iceland. Uh, if you look at the, the biggest tournaments, like I said before, there is almost nobody under 35. And we have uh, our national team, youth national team, we have not been operating, operating that for at least 15 years, probably more. So what was our plan there? Uh, there were five main points that we wanted to focus on. First of all is classes for under 14, uh, then secondary grammar school bridge that I will go over later. Number three, picking out young people from the Bridge Federation School, which is actually, uh, we are seeing results because there's a, a lot of mo more young people coming there as well. Uh, then we started uh, special classes for the best juniors and we are having supervised bridge tournaments for, for, for the young players. What we're doing for the under 14 is we are, we are just uh, getting them used to playing, uh, getting them used to bridge. And the main focus is fun. And they are playing and we have teachers to help them the playing, but the main focus is just to get them used to the cards and get them used to, uh, this is something that's really fun. Uh, our secondary grammar school is our absolutely most important program. Uh, and what we did is we had uh, Brits accepted as credits for secondary grammar schools. Uh, we built up, uh, we built up a program that was went through a quality check and we have program that is that qualifies for three credits and five credits. The difference between three and five is that you can get, get the extra two credits for playing in certain amount of beginners tournaments. Uh, and what we did is that we went to schools and we introduced this and it was uh, quite a lot of interest. Uh, we offered the program we offer assistant teachers, we have the books, we offer them equipment uh, and the entire uh, syllabus. And also what we did uh, is that we knew that not all the schools would start to start to teach spirits. It was probably not enough interest. So what we did is that we built up a classroom in the Federation. So we negotiate with the schools that uh, we are doing the teaching uh, for the schools, some of the schools. So we have around 10 sc schools now that sent, out, sent the students to us, both uh, into our classroom and then we are teaching online as well. And we are taking care of everything. Then. For example, we, there is one school that has only one student. And the, the, the idea was, while we're building up in certain schools, the schools could be a part of that program, sending one, two or 10 students, 
And then when there was enough interest, they would start their own program. Uh, what we have seen is that this has been uh, working quite a lot for us because there are more schools that, are, that we are talking to and, and the schools that, uh, the kids that have gone through this program have actually been very, very positive towards Brits. And also what we have seen is that uh, the kids coming to learn to how to play Brits in the Federation are actually kids that most of them are, are not in any other sport. So this is something we feel is really, really important. What we are also doing is that we are paying out young people from our Brit school, which is like, uh, like I said earlier, that uh, uh, the normal Brit, Brit school that we have. We have all program free of charge for people under 20. That means that that's free in schools. If you want to learn something, if you want to go to a tournament, it's of no cost. We waive all cost for everything for people under 20. And there are always younger and younger students coming. And then we are picking out uh, the best young players or the, or the most prospect, and we are offering special class to them. Uh, we have extra classes once a week for the best juniors. And we are trying to have follow-up and encouragement. This is really important. And we are really focusing on having like a motivated young teachers. And we have experienced teachers, both the young teachers and, and experienced teachers with the young teachers. This is important because it's important that this is, this is something that is fun. Uh, the supervised bridge tournaments that we have, like I said earlier, it's a big step to go to play in a club. Uh, and it's really important that when the young kids are playing, they're playing it as, it, with someone at a similar level. And we have the teacher helping and instructing. And what has been the result of our program? Uh, we have actually, we have, when you have a, the, the under 14 seminars, it's quite a lot of kids coming. And we have close to 100 kids in the secondary grammar school program. Uh, and we have more people at the moment learning Brits every mon month than the history of the Federation. Uh, and there's more people learning Brits, like I said earlier, than over the last 15, 20 years. Uh, and there's more people playing than over the last 15, 20 years. And the main result is everybody's talking about Brits in Iceland. And everybody wants to learn Brits. We have all the programs sold out. Uh, one of our biggest problems at the moment is that we don't have, ha we don't have enough space because uh, in, in the housing, we have two holes in our housing and they are always full. There is always some clubs playing and we are always having some seminars. Uh, the challenging that we are facing uh, for the future is number one, we need stamina. And when I'm saying that, uh, then I'm talking about it's we are running very, very fast and it's it can be tiring. And but this is this is something that we have to keep going and not slow down and believe in what we are doing. We need bigger space. It's we are we have uh, like I said we have two areas uh, two holes that we have that, that we're using and it's it's we would need at least double that size to to for all the players that we are having in at the moment and we need more resources. Uh, it's. It's, we, are, we are training up teachers, we are training up uh, new tournament directors, but we need more of tournament directors, we need more teachers, and we need more people in, involved. 
And then we really need some more money. That's probably the biggest challenge we have at the moment. Uh, it's like uh, the 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 equity of the, of of the federation is quite strong because we own our own house, but we are now after a period of 15, 20 years with been a lot of decline, we are now running quite a lot, meaning that we are paying more teachers. Uh, we had had to uh, double the cleaning bills. We are, every, the cost is going up quite a lot. And that's going to be uh, the, one of the biggest challenges to, to follow, follow the, the, res the results that we are getting is to have the funds to do that. Uh, this was my presentation, and uh, I want to hope for uh, for some questions and discussion. Uh, well, thank you very much. That's a really uh, clear explanation of where you're at. Uh, we've got a couple of questions. How did you convince the TV stations to tell the story of Bridge, what what did it take a lot of convincing? Uh, we sponsored. You so sponsored. we paid for it. You paid for it. Okay. And the next question is, um, uh, how are you doing your fundraising? You you sort of touched on it. Was there one specific technique that gave you uh, the most? Uh, this is actually a quite good question. It's, I'm not too happy about uh, how the fundraising has been doing. Uh, however, we have received more support from the government. And the reason for that we have received more uh, support from the government is that now we are focusing quite a lot of uh, young kids that have uh, well there is for example there is quite a lot of especially young men that are now have some special skills but have maybe a little difficulty in, in other aspects and they are now in some basements with uh, seven computers five pizza boxes and 20 liters of coke and they never come out and they just live there. So we have been quite focusing quite a lot of getting those kids because we have seen that uh, they could have really, really special skills in Brits, even though they have not uh, a very good skills in um, communication and, and, and issues like that. And, the, and, we have, uh, and what we have done there has really impressed the government. So we have received more funds in areas like that. Okay. Um, one question is, um, how did you go about getting the schools to give credit? Was that an easy task or um, did you do a presentation? How, how did that work? Uh, that was actually, we did it with the schools uh, and we spent quite a lot of effort in that. It's like uh, we, threat, we built up a syllabus uh, and we went through a quality checks with the schools and we have one school that is behind our program. Uh, so it, it was it was actually quite a lot of work, but what we have now is uh, something we can, we can use for the next probably five, six, seven years. So, and, and, and it's really important and, and it's, a, it's a really good sell for the kids to get credits to, for, for learn, how, uh, to learn grids. Uh, 